All right, I've made a lot of progress on the controller and um, got some PCBs made using the Oshpark service, just like I used for the kitchen timer. And they turned out really nice. I'm very happy with them. Um, I, uh, I did my, these are my, my first PCB that's got surface mount parts on it. And so that was, uh, that was really easy to do. It wasn't a big deal. I just used the tutorial that Spark Fun had for how to use Eagle and do, um, do surface mount work. And it was uh, very easy. I only messed up one part. Um, you can kind of, kind of see the ground plane, the, like a light purple, uh, areas on the on the top side here and on the back I do not have a ground plane I forgot to do that I I kind of thought it would just I, I didn't realize you have to do it on both sides I thought you would just put it in and then it would do it but it, you have to do it on both sides of the board actually I did do it right with the kitchen timer PCB but I messed it up on this one so besides that um, just doesn't have as much grounding as it as it could, but it's fine. So, very cool. Ash Park uh, took two weeks to uh, to get these to me, and it was twenty dollars for the for the three of them. And so um, here's the whole schematic of the uh, the circuit. And then uh, I got I just finished all the soldering here, and. It's working great. So this is the unit here, and it, you know it's going to be pretty, pretty thin. In the uh, so the wooden box logo around it. it won't have to be very thick. It'll be a little bit, a little bit wide, um, but, uh, but not too, not too, too deep. I've got everything soldered in except for the LED. I was gonna got it floating here because I'm not quite sure where I'm gonna put it. Maybe I'll stick it over here, or maybe I'll put it behind it and have it shine behind the box. I'm not sure. But um, if I I'm wake it up here so I can uh, turn the pump on and off, and it's showing the, uh, the battery voltage just fine, and it's within five hundredths of the reading that this multimeter is showing me. So very, very close. And this, this really depended upon the uh, 10 mega ohm resistors that are part of the voltage divider circuit. I found that I had to really match these together um, very closely when I was setting up this circuit to get it to read the voltage perfectly. Um, and so the 10 mega ohm resistors that I, I got out of one of these uh, these parts bags here, I, I matched them as well, um, and they're pretty close. You know, it's within, uh, like I said, five hundredths of the voltage that the uh, multimeter is showing, so that's pretty good. So the multimeter, I think it shows a little bit lower, so it would say 0 0.92 volts here, 3.92 volts. Oh, and the the battery charging seems to be okay. I've got the uh, a USB connector plugged in right now. If I unplug it, it'll it'll quit charging. So that is working good, and the, and the voltage starts dropping like you know you'd expect it. So it seems to be working right. I haven't had a chance to see if it goes all the way to full charge, but I bet it will. And then the uh, the light sensor in the front here, it's working just great. And I've got it so when it goes up to thirty percent brightness, it changes the contrast here. And the uh, LED, I just got it floating in here, but if I put a little pressure on it. So it, the red and then uh, the green part and the blue part are all working. This is just all three parts on, so it's like a white color. So um, the LED is all hooked up right. I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with this yet. I still have to do a lot of software uh, changes to this thing. Um, I'd like to be able to add more um, endpoints, you know, through this this uh this rotary encoder like somehow be able to edit the name and um the id the radio id uh for the endpoint um, all through the rotary encoder and doing clicking i don't know how i'm gonna do that <laughs> so uh that's a stretch goal i think to try to make it so you could you could add more endpoints 
and then figure out what to do with the uh, the LED. So yeah, it's working really cool. I'm really, really happy that it worked. It's worrisome. You, you send it off and you hope you looked at everything. I'd still miss the ground plane, but got, you know, all the connections worked okay. So that was, uh, that was really cool. I was very excited. Uh, here's the, here's the, the meat of it all soldered in here. So um, I've got a mini USB on this side of it and then a, one of those micro JST connectors for the, um, the battery pack. And then the resistors and capacitors that are for the charging circuit right there. And then um, the resistors and the capacitor for the voltage divider are right there. And then uh, this is the transistor that is in the resistors for the transistor to turn the OLED display on and off. It's just, it's got the four connections just right there. So that's why it's, it's real close to it right there. And then here's the RFM69. And it's just laying on the board. And I just soldered, I made the made it so the pads were a little bit wider and soldered them, soldered them onto it. And I I found this technique on a website called Low Power Lab. Um, there's a it's a, a really great site. Uh, there's a, a guy there named Felix that has done a ton of work making a Arduino compatible board that uses these RF, um, these RFM 69s and RFM 12, uh, boards. And so his, uh, his site, and I'm using his library too. I just modified it a little bit to, um, to, for my firmware in here. So he, he really helped me out with a lot of stuff. And, uh, yeah, so, um, these are the resistors here, all these, these five, Resistors here are all used for the RGB LED, and um, yeah, that's it. And then just uh, I've got the Arduino Pro Mini just plugged right in. I've got the the pin out right here, you can see, and I just plugged it right in, and then soldered it in, and clipped off the ends so it doesn't sticks out too far on the other side. And then I put a um, a straight header connection on there, so that when when I'm got this in the box, I can just plug in. Uh, the programming header right here like that and I'll um, yeah I'll, I'll just run it off of the battery when I'm doing the programming because I, I don't want to have power going through the programming header and have the battery in it or I guess I could unplug the battery and program it so yeah that'll that'll um, that is, will be good and I've got the a good area for the battery here so if uh, if you look at this, the battery will fit right, right here, just perfectly. Once I get the LED wires out of the way, it'll fit right in there, just great. So, um, won't be very thick, and it'll be, uh, it's going to work out really, really good, I think. So I just have to start working on the, uh, the box now, the wooden box for the thing, and figure out where this, this LED is going to go. So, um... One thing I wanted to show too was uh, I had a little issue with my battery here, so I killed the battery. It doesn't work anymore. I drained it um, past the point of no return. The lithium polymer batteries, they can't be recharged if you go too low on them. And um, so I had this plugged into the, uh, the breadboard and the, um, on the breadboard, you can see this switch here. This was a switch I, I put on here where I could turn the power on and off to just the Pro Mini that was plugged into the board. Um, but the battery was still hooked up to the rest of the circuit. Uh, it was still powering these the positive and negative on these rails. It was only the positive going into the Pro Mini that I had switched right here. So, um, so what happened, I've, I discovered, I drew this little diagram to try to help explain it was uh, here's the here's the battery plugged in to the circuit it was going to the positive side of the the OLED and then the negative side of the OLED is going to an NPN transistor and then that goes to ground and NPN transistors are um, they're the ones that are suited for switching the negative side and to turn them on and off you just send 
a high signal through a resistor to the NPN transistor and that will enable the current to flow to ground. And the other type of transistor called a PNP uh, transistor, it is more suited to be on the high side instead of being on the low side. And I think I need to investigate uh, PNPs a little bit more because uh, what happened was when the, Ar when the Arduino is asleep, like right, right now it's asleep, this circuit is only drawing um, 90 or 85 microamps. Um, so it's, it's not consuming very much. And most of that, like 80 of that, is just because of the, um, the linear voltage regulator that's on this Arduino Pro Mini. It's sucking, it's sucking the majority of the power. And, um, and when this Arduino is n not powered, like when I had when that switch off, um, w what happened was the SDA and the SLC lines, they acted as a, a ground and let the, some current flow this way. Uh, I did test this and it, there was no current going through the transistor but there was current going through the data and the clock lines and it was reaching ground. And uh, I guess when, the, uh, when I'm putting the Arduino to sleep, it's setting these to high. The pins that these are hooked up to are set to high and it's preventing current from flowing through here. But when it, when it wasn't asleep, when I just had it turned off, it wasn't setting these pins high or low and Unfortunately, uh, it, these things ended up getting grounded and it let current flow. And it let, um, the current flow was pretty low. It was only one milliamp. It was like 0.9, you know, almost one milliamp. Uh, but this battery wasn't charged up all the way and I had it plugged in overnight. And um, I came to it, you know, almost 24 hours later and I saw that I had had left the Pro Mini switch off and my battery was totally dead. And then I was sort of investigating what happened. I was really worried because I had already ordered my circuits, <laughs> circuit boards. Um, and anyways, this is, this is what happened and it, uh, it killed the battery. So I have to make sure the Pro, the Arduino is turned on for these, uh, so these lines are set to high and it doesn't let any current current flow through. So I do think I have a little issue with my circuitry. Um, I don't know if a PNP transistor would be better. Maybe I need to put some pull-up resistors on these guys, um, pulling them up to the high of the battery instead of like 3.3 volts, whatever the battery voltage is at making sure that they're set up, pulled up to that. Um, I guess those are a couple things I could try maybe, and that would, uh, that would fix that problem. Cause it's kind of weird for me to, to switch the low side, but that's what I did with the kitchen timer. And that's what I did here because it's easier to, to calculate the resistor that you should use for NPN transistors and to turn these on, you just, set them high and that turns it on you have to for pmp you you have to put these things to be high to turn it off and when you turn it to ground that's when you allow current to flow through these so pmp is a little bit backwards so anyways that's the story of how i killed my my four dollar lithium polymer battery pack oh and i did order a protection circuit um they were only like three or four dollars too but it's a little another circuit board and I'll just stick it on here and it will it's got a MOSFET on it and if the battery voltage gets too low it'll disconnect the battery and um, that'll 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 save it that's another backup so that's also something else maybe I could think about trying to figure out how to do on a on my own circuit is have a, um, a MOSFET that could that could be used to switch this uh, the juice on this totally off if it gets too low to protect it but that that's about it um, next up is to build the box that will uh, hold this guy